that was the clause that removed the requirement for the AGM to approve the financial statements. That is that is a proposed change, yes. So that remains standing. Yes. The, the proposal from the board was to change the wording from approve to uh, receive for information. Um, I don't know with the permission of the board if, or with the chair, if I may now pose another question. Go ahead, Dr. Geller. So I do think the AGM provides critical oversight and this is really the only opportunity that the members have to ensure that the that their membership money is being used the way they want it to be used. This is their opportunity. Dr. Geller, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Can you propose a motion then and speak to the motion? Well, if I, if I propose a motion and then speak to the motion, it closes debate. No, it doesn't. It does not. Well, I can only speak to it once. You must propose, propose your motion. You must get a seconder, and then you may speak to it. You may speak to it twice. So I'm not aware that in Robert's rules of order, in order to speak, that I need to have a motion to before I can address the AGM. Can someone show me the clause that says I must have a motion before I can address the AGM? Uh, Dr. Geller, it's Keyshore here. So we loosen the rules of the uh, assembly to allow asking questions of invited guests and our consultant. In this case, you want to propose a motion. So please give us the wording of the motion. We'll find a seconder. And then you will have the privilege of speaking first to that motion, but that will not close discussion and you can speak again to it. Not sure that you have the right to limit a member to address the AGM. Nobody has the power to limit a member addressing the AGM. Okay, in that case, uh, I'm. Is the AGM not the RA? I'm, I'm sure. I, I'm just offering the president who is chairing this meeting advice, and so my word is not final. So I suppose the president could either choose to rule on that or we could get advice from SMA staff. Well, yeah, being it uh, being a virtual meeting and we have um, uh, a limited time to go through this, this is important um, uh, matters. Um, I will just get advice from, from other staff uh, for a minute as well. So please, uh, uh, thank you for your patience. I think we will we'll proceed and then um, uh, Dr. Gallagher, go ahead so with, um, with your, with your um, comments. Thank you. I mean, um, the, as I was saying, the, the financial statements coming to the AGM for approval is the only chance the membership has to actually uh, review the financial operations of the organization and provide oversight to ensure that their money is being spent the way they intend it to be spent, um, that there aren't, um, and that, that, that their opportunity to ask uh, the finance committee, the CEO and the board for clarifications about how the money is or is not being spent and where overruns come from. If they're merely receiving it for information, the ability to ask those questions is severely hampered. Um, and the membership then is no longer has the ability to provide the oversight except through the RA, which you may argue could do that, except the RA uh, elects the board, the RA selects the finance committee, the RA selects the auditor. Um, and so then the RA controls everything around the finances and is not, there is no outside agency that could then question with any authority or oversight, how the RA is functioning financially. As insofar as, as that's the case, I would say that to merely include this as part of housekeeping or general principles is a, a significant uh, violation of trust. Um, 
the flippant comment about financials are what they are uh, is it borders on insulting. And I would, I, I, I would, um, I would, I would like a response to that before I make a motion. Okay. Uh, we have another uh, question, uh, Dr. Shannon. Hi, Brian. I am the well soon to be retiring chair of the finance committee, and it's not actually flippant, uh, as Brian said. You have to accept audited statements or rec receive them from information because you can't change statements retroactively. We can't go back and change the, fi the finances. We can question them, we can ask for input, we can change the budget, but you can't change audited statements that have been done. That's what Brian said in his, in his comments. So you receive for information, but that doesn't negate making comments or changes going forward. Thank you for your comments. I, I think there's just one other thing is the, the RA is being, is being elected from the membership. They have terms and they, they have accountability in that way. And so out of, out of the whole province, the RA has a diverse um, um, interests and, uh, and, and oversight. Uh, so I, I, I'm also feeling that the, the, the RA is the body that does uh, have the the ability to oversee all of this. They have access to the statements uh, on, the, on the website, and so that is the primary respons uh, uh, responsible and accountable body to, uh, to oversee um, the, the board and, and the finance committee. Um, so there's one more question. We have another hand raised from Dr. Stonem. Dr. Stonem, Stonem uh, please go ahead. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, actually, I, I believe that uh, uh, Dr. Shannon just raised the point that the, the statements are received for information. You can't change them. You can't approve them. Uh, they are just received for information. So I was just supporting essentially exactly what Dr. Shannon said. Thank you. In the uh, interest of time, I, uh, I think we need to wrap up. Um, and uh, th there's still the question about the procedural aspect of this. So, um, okay. Um, are there any other comments? Uh, we, we still have we, to figure out some of the- trying to make a comment. Do you have somebody else for the question? Nothing showing up for us. We have one question. We have a question now from Dr. Thorpe. Dr. Thorpe. I was just gonna say Brian had his hand up, Brian Sharfstein. Oh, Brian, go ahead. Well, just, uh, just uh, I, I would certainly concur with many of the points that Brian Geller has made in regard to the ability of the AGM to look into the affairs of the association. The, the, the resolution, as you see, where it says information is just a clarified process. But in fact, the, the AGM is given authority over bylaws, so they have to see bylaws and approve them. And they have to be, they have to be presented with the financial statement. So that doesn't change the opportunity that the AGM will have to review and then make comment. And clause A says they can make any recommendations they like. So I would, in an effort to reassure Brian Geller that um, this would not diminish the ability the AGM has. It, it reinforces they will see the financial statements but they'll receive them for information because you can't amend uh, a retrospective financial summary. Well, that, that may be, but there's a difference between receiving for information and approving. I think, and I think that's probably what we're debating right now. Um, and I think that 
the, 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 the level of oversight required to approve something is higher. And that would then imply that your ability to delve into it and question it is also higher. You could receive them and not approve them because you find that there's evidence of fraud or whatever. Um, and, and so it, it is not a fine distinction. And I think it's wonderful that the organization until to date has always benefited from the fact that the AGM has received and approved as if it was for information. But I do think it's a very important oversight role. As I pointed out, the RA then becomes very um, uh, monopolistic in its power. It appoints the finance committee, it appoints the auditors, it appoints the board, it approves the budget. Everything then depends on the RA and nobody has the power um, to say to the RA in a forceful way, you're, the way you're doing the finances is not acceptable. Clause A may, may very well provide some of that, but then you could then argue that by separating out Clause B for distinct consideration, then removes it from the oversight of Clause A. I mean, I think, and those are exactly the kinds of things that I'm I'm saying is that it shouldn't just these sort of shouldn't just be considered quickly uh, and they should be uh, considered in a more in-depth way. And so if I may, that would be the motion I would make that this clause be removed from consideration at the AGM and fully explored by the governance review committee and with a report back to the AGM and the RA before a bylaw amendment affecting this is voted on. That clause would be 16.4.1b. All right, uh, Ivan, did you guys get the, the, the motion that was uh, proposed? Ivan? Did you guys get the motion proposed? Yeah. I just, I'm wondering if you could mute me, please. I need to return a call. Uh, we need the motion as well, though. I believe there may be another motion coming from the floor. We do. Okay. So, so what, what will this motion be? Does it have to do with tabling or postponing the current yeah. discussion? Yeah. In that case, that motion would take precedence. Okay. So there's another motion um, speaking to the current um, point. So... So a motion from the floor uh, presented by Dr. Epp. Uh, be it resolved that a special meeting of the membership be convened as per the SMA bylaws to finalize the AGM discussion uh, begun today. Moved by Dr. Epp and seconded by Dr. Litwin. Dr. Epp. Hi, I, I will speak to this friendly motion. Um, clearly this, uh, there's a lot of uh, good discussion and, and um, unfortunately we are in a virtual platform which makes uh, communication difficult sometimes and uh, there are time limitations on the meeting today. So in the interest of giving this uh, the fulsome discussion that it obviously needs and the fact that the verif verification of the vote needs to be done and that can't be done immediately, uh, and that this deserves, you know, the full attention of the membership. I would propose that we defer this to a special meeting uh, that will be called in the future uh, so that we can finalize the discussion around these governance issues. Thank you, Dr. Epp. Uh, Dr. Litwin, do you want to speak to it as well? Any questions? There are no questions. Um, so, oh, there is a question, sorry, pardon me. We have a hand raised from Dr. Pillay. Dr. Pillay. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I, I like the motion, I like deferring the, the, the discussion, but I think Dr. Geller has just got one point there, and if, if we're at the point where we can just vote on this, we get it over and done with, instead of having another whole day to discuss this. I mean, there are other points which can be referred back to the governance committee for review, but I think he just has one point. If it's just one point more, I, I would say that we should not be postponing this to another meeting. Um, that's my opinion, thank you. 
Uh, thank you, Dr. Pillay. I, th I think there's, there are other considerations as well. We're not through the AGM topics that need to be discussed, um, and there's a time limit in terms of what we can do. There's another question. We have a hand raised from Dr. Burwell. Dr. Burwell. Hi, I just wanted to also go back and sort of say that I think that because the vote was so close on Brian's original motion, and if the outcome of that vote were to change on sc scrutiny of the who was voting, it could change the discussion a lot. So I think there's more at stake than just this, uh, this one thing that we're discussing now. And I sort of agree with Dr. Epp. Thank you. Thank you. Any more discussion? We have one more hand raised from Dr. Geller. Um, thank you. I just would like to ask Dr. App to clarify whether or not that would include the motions that were previously, uh, or the amendments that were previously discussed and motions made and on, or if it's just, or if those would be excluded. Thank you, Dr. Epp. No, my intention is not to exclude things, uh, but the vote needs to be verified. And uh, as Dr. Burwell just mentioned, that that could change in upcoming discussions. So, you know, we need the facts to be able to carry this discussion forward. And uh, I think that that is uh, the spirit of why I'm doing this so that we can all participate fully informed. Uh, having, uh, thank you for that answer, Dr. App. I would, I would support the motion. Okay. Are there no further questions? I, there's another question. We have a hand raised from Dr. Kalra. Dr. Kalra. Can you hear me? Now we can. Okay, thank you, and Mr. Chair. I think uh, uh, I will support this motion, the last motion by Dr. Ab, because it will give us a clarity, it will give us a time to think about it, and also many questions which are raised by Dr. Gallagher can be answered at that time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would then uh, call the question, uh, Resolution 9 be resolved that the special meeting of the membership be convened as per SMA bylaws to finalize the AGM discussion begun today, moved by Dr. Epp and uh, seconded by Dr. Litwin. I'm sorry, there's yet another question, so can we have the speaker please? We have a hand raised from Dr. Hayton. Dr. Hayton. Nice. Can you hear me? Can. Yeah, sorry to prolong <laughs> this. I guess I just wanted, I wasn't clear. Um, I thought it, it, it would be my understanding that if the initial vote that was carried out with respect to Dr. Geller's initial motion um, turns out to uh, be against the motion, that that would stand um, rather than be revisited. And I wasn't clear on that. Whereas if it's, if it's voted... Uh, in favor of his motion, then of course that's a different matter altogether if the, if the initial vote is reversed, but could that be confirmed one way or the other, please? Thanks. This motion would agree with what you said, Dr. Hayden. That yes, it needs to be confirmed. And uh, once it's confirmed, if, it's, if the motion is carried, then it's carried. And if it's denied, then it's denied. But that doesn't preclude the need for a more fulsome discussion about this entire topic, I think. And the verification can't happen in the immediate moments of this meeting, unfortunately. Okay, there's another question. Uh, Dr. Geller. Yeah, no, thank you. So I, I wasn't sure who was just speaking, but it was my understanding from Dr. Epps' answer that this motion would include the previous motion, whether it was defeated or uh, carried. That was my understanding from Dr. Epps' uh, clarification. Yeah, it has to be verified, but discussion can still occur at a future meeting. Are you clear on that, Dr. Geller, um, that it needs to be verified uh, in order to and, and, and then it will come back to the, to, to, to the discussion at this special meeting. So regardless of the result of the vote on my motion, that will be discussed at the special meeting. So if, it, if, it, if it's been uh, carried by the, 
by the numbers uh, that we have today, verified numbers, then it will stand. Yeah, the motion will stand, but the topic can be discussed. But the topic can be discussed. Okay, thank you. Is there another question? All questions done. Thank you. Uh, can we vote? Um, and uh, uh, voting starts now. You have 20 seconds. Thank you. Polling has ended and this motion is carried. Uh, I just want to, uh, because of uh, the, the time factor here today, um, we will not be able to get through the whole agenda and so this will be discussed at a special board meeting and uh, please uh, watch out for further information in the next uh, week or two regarding this. Um, Uh, this then concludes. This this then concludes our our 2022 annual general meeting, uh, and uh, this meeting is now adjourned. Thank you all for joining us and for your your input. Back to me. Welcome back to the RA. I'll just take a moment to ask, because of that most recent motion that was passed, I think we're moving on to resolutions. We'll just hear a, a word from Bonnie Brosert. Yeah, thank you. And first of all, I want to thank everyone for the... Um, the, the I'll invite her up to the okay. stage here. Again, let me start with a very heartfelt thanks to the, the de debate and dialogue that's happened over the last um, hour and a bit. There's no question, as, as Dr. Sharfstein said, governance is really the foundation to our organization and it's what makes us strong um, in terms of our efforts. So the next uh, item on the agenda was the Special Committee on Governance Report. And you know from Dr. Sharfstein's uh, presentation a number of minutes ago, very much intertwined with the discussion um, at the AGM and the proposed bylaw amendments. So I would, given that we've compressed the time, um, um, I don't know how to do this procedurally, Dr. Visbanathan, but I'm wondering if I could, if, a, if somebody, an RA delegate, might uh, consider um, a motion to, I, I, I want to know how to best uh, facilitate the presentation on the Special Committees of Governance's report um, at a, a table at a special meeting because we can't give it the time and attention today uh, and I, we can't lose it so we do need to um, reconvene as a community to have that discussion so that's my wish and I, I'll pass so, it back to you where you see hands in the room so two delegates um, as you heard it will be challenging to get through the report on SMA governance uh, it is on the agenda, but it is possible that a delegate, delegate could make a motion similar to what we just heard to postpone it to a special meeting. And so I see a hand up from Dr. Epp. Dr. Epp, would you come up here and we can put you on just next to the stage and we can put you on video. Dr. Epp, do you have a motion to make? Yes, I do, and this is another very friendly motion. Uh, can you guys put it up? So in the spirit of uh, giving this topic the time and reflection that it needs and the fact that we are constrained by time and by virtual um, gathering today, I would like to uh, propose a motion that, um, oh, where did it go? Okay, 
so that we consider the special committee report be deferred to coincide with the special meeting of the membership. There is a motion proposed, uh, be it resolved that consideration of the special committee report be deferred, de be deferred to coincide with a special meeting of the membership. And that should say Mo governance committee, I'm sorry. Membership, special meeting of the governance committee. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna change that so everyone can see it's, what the intent is. It's the, oh, hold on. it's the. Yes. Just a moment. Just so we get the right committee. Sorry. I'll read it, but if you can just take a quick look at it and make sure that's what you intend, Dr. Rapp. Yes. Be it resolved that consideration of the special committee on SMA governance be deferred to coincide with a special meeting of the membership. It's the report, Who, actually, that they were going to give today, so. We'll change that. One second. Moved by Dr. Rep. Dr. Jeffrey, you're listed as a seconder. Is this still okay with you? Seconded by Dr. Jeffrey. Is there any discussion, any debate? There are some questions. Who's first, please? We have Dr. Letting's hand raised. Dr. Letting, please go ahead. You have two minutes. That's fine. I won't be that long. I just want to speak in favor of it. I think that some of the things that Brian's brought forward are valuable. Uh, they warrant discussion. Whether we end up on the same page as him isn't really important. Brian has the experience. Uh, I respect what he has. he's picking up. And I don't want to see it missed. So I want, to, I want us to carry on and get this right because governance is important. Are you speaking for or against this motion? I think I said it for or in favor at the beginning, but sorry if I didn't. Thank you. Any other questions? We have a hand raised from Dr. Stoneham. Dr. Stoneham, please go ahead. Yes, uh, Dr. Stoneham from Saskatoon, a uh, member of the RA, but also a member of the Special Committee. My, uh, could I just get some clarification as to whether that means that the Special Committee itself is extended in the future? My understanding... Audio is really fading out here. Sorry, my understanding is that the uh, committee was only uh, constituted until this meeting to report back to the spring meeting of the RA. Is it in the intention of this that the special committee itself is extended until this special meeting of the membership? And does that need to be clarified in this motion? Did you hear me? I'm sorry. We did hear you. There's just some discussion. Please. I'll speak to that, and the answer is yes, that the special committee, please, would remain in place uh, at least until the time of the special meeting to give their report. Any other questions? Seeing no other questions, we will move to a vote. Now, we are back in the... All right, so we're moving back to Slido voting. Yep. Yeah. So you should still have your Slido window open. If not, please open your Slido browsers. Sorry. Hold on for that for a second, please. Right. Sorry, I've been corrected. Uh, we have not moved on to the back to the RA so this is still part of the AGM so we're staying in your zoom window so please vote in your zoom window just as you have been doing for the last hour and you will have 20 seconds I'd like to open the polling now polling is opened Polling is closed. That motion has carried. 
So the special committee report on SMA governance will be deferred to coincide with the special meeting. We will carry on with the RA moving to resolutions.